Today on Outside the Box Reviews, we are taking a look at the NECA Prometheus Series 1, and this is the engineer in his pressure suit. Back in the spring, right before Prometheus came out, I did an Alien Week, covering all the Alien figures I hadn't, which ended up being only like three or four figures, but still... I had fun doing it in preparation for this movie. I was very highly anticipating this movie. But ironically, even though I did the Alien Week, I knew going in that I was not going to get an Alien movie. I had heard the rumors, and I knew to go in not expecting to see Xenomorphs and all that cool stuff. So I feel like my opinion of this movie is a little higher than most people's just because... I kind of knew what I was getting myself into. I had no delusions about what was going to be in that movie. And granted, while the movie didn't really answer a whole lot of questions about anything, it still was very entertaining to me and visually very cool. So NECA making these action figures, I'm all down for picking them up. I'm pretty entertained by the visual aspects of this movie. And they do tie into the Alien universe, which makes it fit into my collection. But here we have the Engineer in his pressure suit. Now, I would picked up these figures as they came out, but recently they came out with a two-pack at Toys R Us, and I think I promised that at the end of my last Predator review. But I realized that I can't really cover that figure without first covering this guy. So let's take a closer look at him and see how he stacks up. Now, one thing that weirds me out about this line is that it's going to be one of the few lines we've ever gotten from NECA where the scale is so mixed together. Because the engineer is supposed to stand about 8 feet tall, and we're getting the engineer, and then we're also getting a bunch of human characters. And other things, other creatures. So, there's a very non-standardized height and style for this line which makes me very excited to see how they all look together when all said and done but because of that accessories in this line look like they're going to be spaced out in kind of an uneven way so the engineers get nothing nada and it looks like the humans are going to have some cool stuff and it looks like the deacon alien next year is going to have a lot of cool stuff now my first big gripe about this character, this figure, is the face sculpt. I think the head sculpt on him is a little too serene. It doesn't really lend itself well to most poses. And this is a highly articulated figure and I've been trying to do a lot of different poses with him because he's capable of it. But unfortunately his facial expression is just so passive it just makes it hard to do anything with. I would have preferred if they went more off that scene where he's woken up out of cryostasis and David and all the rest of them are there and he's a little pissed. I think just a vague sense of displeasure, not like super angry, but just, you know, grumpy, I guess, would have played better. But he just looks so calm, so passive here. I'm not a big fan. On a technical level, however, the head sculpt is nice. The paint on it is this very, very soft white, almost translucent, but not quite. Really good. He's got some good facial structure here. You can kind of make out the bones underneath it, up in the temples and everything. His eyes are kind of this halo effect, which looks really cool. He has like red circles around him, giving him a little bit of color and texture. The nose is very prominent, like it is on the character. Overall, I think they did a good job with the actual design of the head for NECA, but just the sculpt on the face, the design of the expression, I feel is lacking. But what isn't lacking is the detail on this costume. Holy cow! Is it detailed to every degree? Now, they went with a very Giger-esque design, which makes sense in the Alien universe, but there's so much here, all these kind of bones and organic-looking... Uh, to me, it kind of almost reminds me of coral or an organic... Not a rock fixture, but more of a um, oceanic design, more just built up by layers and layers of sediment or microorganisms or whatever coming together and forming this. And in the movie, the pressure suit had a translucency to it. There was kind of a translucent layer over kind of a milky layer. And obviously that's very hard to achieve in action figure form. And NECA didn't quite pull it off in some of the areas. I think some of these areas were a little darker. And then you can kind of see through them into the milky sections and everything. But overall, it gives a really nice effect. It has that very shimmery, shiny effect, almost slimy effect that it had in the movie. Which is just great. A lot of little, just tiny details all over him. Like, everywhere you look on this character, there is sculpting detail, which is 
phenomenal. And the paint lends itself well as well. There's that soft white undertone, which is almost the same as his flesh color. And then it just has darker bits and just different kind of brush strokes on it that give it this very organic feel. Turn around, one of the big areas I don't like is his butt here. It kind of went with a little too dark of a color, even though it is movie accurate. I think it could have been a little lighter and had a little more detail done to it. But everything else here on the back is just as equally detailed and very impressive on NECA's end of how much sculpting work went into this guy. Just a phenomenal, phenomenal sculpt. He even has his little boots with the individual toes in it. His hands very much go along with the passive head sculpt. They're just kind of open and relaxed. There's some veins in the back of them. The fingernails are detailed. All the wrinkles are detailed, which is a nice touch. It's more than you'd get out of some toy companies, but it's nothing phenomenal. And like I said, they're both just this relaxed, open pose. You can't really do anything with them. I think that's just the overall thing with this figure to me is there's a lot of good things going on here, but he doesn't lend himself well to any kind of image. There's nothing really here as far as the look. You can't really recreate a scene because most of what I think of when I think of the pressure suit engineer is him being angry. He was, they woke him up and he was constantly angry for the rest of the movie. There was very little where he was passive like this. And maybe there were some in the holograms or whatever, but as far as the actual character goes, I felt like he just needed to be more angry. I felt like this is just too weak. Now what I do plan is hopefully in Series 3, I think, if we ever get to a Series 3, I hope we do, they have the Shaw figure coming out. And she's supposed to come with a David head, the severed David head. And... I actually intend to, when I get that, I'm probably going to just put it in his hands like this and have him holding it up. That's my intent. That's what I want to do. Now, if sales aren't strong, I'm guessing we'll never get there, which would be horrible. It would make me very sad. But if we do get there, that's what I want to do. I guess worst case scenario, we are getting a David in Wave 2. Wave 2 is pretty much definitely coming out as far as I know. So at least I could have him maybe grasping the character's head. Another thing to mention on this figure is like the new Jason figure, he has a diaper. He has this rubberized section over his lower torso. It allows him to have this articulation and just not look weird, I guess. Just weirds me how the neck is giving him these diapers. And if you don't mess with it, it looks just as good as the rest of the sculpt. The paint is even between the two, the sculpting detail. You really can't tell, especially from a distance, but when you get up there and mess with it, it just seems so odd as a feature. It just, it's a diaper. That's all I can think about when I see it. For articulation, he has a ball-jointed head. You get a pretty good range of motion. Up and down is a little hindered by the back of the head, but they did sculpt it well enough where you can get some good motion there. Side to side is no problem. The way the neck is shaped, it is a little odd, but... You know, he won't look normal with his head turned to the side like this because theoretically this whole piece should have moved and maybe this is a case where they should have gone the Terminator route and had the head and the neck combined, but it does work. He has his pin socket shoulders. You can't go up too far, but you can swivel around. Very tight joints on him. You can bend really nicely at the elbow past 90 degrees, which is what I feel is necessary for any figure doing this. You could rotate at the elbow as well. Ball jointed wrists. He has mid torso articulation on a ball joint, so forward and back, rotate, all the good stuff. Really nice there. His legs are on that joint that I kind of hate, but I'm getting used to, where you can rotate them on one axis and you have to turn it to rotate on another. Same with all the Marvel figures. It's just becoming a popular joy, and I understand why it's used a lot, and I know a lot of people like it. It holds a pose really well, too, so I guess I can't knock it for that, but it's just sometimes a pain to get it to turn, especially because a lot of times this upper leg articulation is kind of hard to get. You kind of have to like, turn it and lock out the leg joint before you can get the upper leg swivel here. You can bend and rotate at the knee. You can't quite get 90 degrees, but it's the knee. It's all right. And then he has ball jointed feet. As I said before, I feel like it's going to be impossible to review the two pack that just came out without having this guy reviewed and under our belts. So I figure this is a necessary review to get out of the way. 
The detail on him is great. I love the suit. They did a great job with it. It looks very movie accurate. Some of the translucencies and things aren't quite what they were in the movie, but I'm sure that would have been ridiculously expensive to manufacture. I can only imagine how expensive it would be to manufacture something like that. And I would rather pay 15 to $17 price point on these guys instead of $30 a pop, which pretty much probably would have killed the line right off the bat. So I don't really care that you can't get that level of movie accuracy. I feel like this is a very nice figure for what it is. I just wish the expression to the whole thing, the face and the hands together, would have been more aggressive. I, I feel like a broken record on this. But it just does nothing for me to have him looking so just passive. It makes my feelings towards this character more passive. I don't have as much passion for this figure as I think I would if it was something more intense and it's just not there it's just not there for me it's sad i wish it was better and i feel like it has to be a conditional recommend i'm going to recommend him as an art piece he's beautifully sculpted and he gets a very weak recommend on that level but he could have been so much stronger and if you're not a big fan i could see this being an easy pass and that's disappointing because i wanted to love this figure more than i did and originally I didn't even pick him up, originally I was going to pass on him because that face killed me and my completest mentality said I had to go back and get him. So I did. So the weakest of recommends for this guy, not my favorite, but definitely a nice introduction to the line. But when we move on to the next figure in this line, we're going to get something that I was very, very excited about. So in the meantime, check out Outside the Box Reviews on Facebook. I post finds on there and all kinds of cool stuff. And until next time, this has been another Outside the Box review, Prometheus has landed.